All right, folks, welcome back to another adventure in the garage. Today, we're gonna to be doing a little how-to on this inrush current amp clamp meter. It's got a lot of functions. There's a lot of stuff to go through. If you're considering buying this meter, got some links for you in the description. I also have a 15% discount code for you from when you buy off their site and that coupon code never expires. So no matter when you find this video, it should be good for you. And then if you prefer Amazon for your purchases, I've got a coupon for that as well. Otherwise, if you already have this product and you want to know the ins and outs of it more, just want to touch on some of the things that I really like. I think overall for the price, you're not going to beat the functionality of this this meter is geared specifically for a lot of electrical motor troubleshooting so if you work with a lot of vfds if your hvac industrial electrical mechatronics you know oil and gas one of the things that i love right off the bat is let's just talk about the display because it is always lit i don't understand why meter manufacturers haven't figured out yet that we're in the dark a lot of the time either because we've had to isolate a circuit or for testing or for lockout tag out there's always going to be two numbers on the display it has ambient temperature and then if you're in some type of ac mode then it's going to have your hertz displayed then something like your thermocouple setting it has it in fahrenheit and celsius always displayed which i thought was really nice so i really am in love with this display the meter comes with a pretty sweet case that i really like a nice set of very flexible leads, which anyone that has a good amount of meter experience knows there's nothing worse than getting stiff, cheap feeling leads right after you got your super new nice meter. We also have this thermal couple attachment. I'm not the biggest fan of this style just because it can put a lot of strain on these conductors, but it does come with that as well as your owner's manual. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know down in the comment section. I usually get back to everyone. Let's get started. First setting that I really wanted to show off was just the accuracy of the DC amp clamp uh, measurement for our steady current reading. The fluke up here, I'll be doing an in-series current measurement for something this small is the most accurate way to get an, a measurement. And let's just see how it does compared to the amp clamp. And you can see they're really close in readings, which I find to be extremely impressive for this small amount of current. It's able to measure it that accurately. Let's even compare it to another DC amp clamp and you can see we're getting a really accurate measurement for a DC amp clamp that's meant to measure hundreds of amps. I wanted to show you some of the features. We're in the AC current clamp steady state measurement mode. It's auto ranging or we can do manual selection. We have min and max values, which is great. Something that's really unique to this meter that I think is really special and something to talk about is we have this relative and zero button. So in some states, we want to do a zero out like in our DC clamp mode, we'll do zero. And then in AC, we can do relative. So what that means is as we're running this motor, I can hit relative. It'll set the current draw for this basically at a zero point. And what this is helpful for is if we have a three phase motor, we set it to relative and then we can check the current draw of each line to check for load balance, which will be great for troubleshooting. I'll go ahead and kick on this motor and let's see what it's reading. Let's go over the inrush current measurement of the meter. That's really what it's advertised for. And I wanted to take a little bit more time to kind of go in more depth. If you're not sure what inrush current is, it's the amount of current draw needed for capacitors, inductive loads, and transformers to start chooching. And so what we'll see is a, is a big peak in the waveform. Now the manual does a pretty good job of explaining this, except they use a DC inrush current waveform, even though the meter I believe is only set up for AC inrush current waveforms to be read. So that kind of had me thinking, well, what would the AC inrush current waveform look like? And let's look at it compared to the meter. Now I want to say as a disclaimer, this scope I have here is not like a, a calibrated instrument. Take what the, the scope says is a grain of salt just because I don't have a way to verify the scope's measurements versus the meter's measurements. There's a little bit of discrepancy and I have a feeling that the scope is coming in high with its peak readings, but also that the meter is giving us RMS values and not 
peak values. So let's just go ahead and run this motor and take a look at what the waveform kind of looks like and what the meter is trying to say. Meter comes in at 47 and our scope peak is at 85. Now I have a guess as to why this is. They say in the manual that it's about a hundred millisecond measurement time. So I think what's going on, if we look at our waveform, this is about a hundred millisecond snapshot. Let's say we go for the average. We go for like the middle absolute peak and that comes in 69 amps. We want an RMS value of that is 48 amps. And that's what we get here. So I believe what the meter output is giving you is basically an RMS value that's an average of the 100 millisecond capture. I'll just touch on VFDs and their output super quick. In case you haven't seen what it looks like under a scope, there's a lot of videos on YouTube you can look up about VFD output to get a better understanding. VFDs are going to use pulse width modulation. Multimeters are great at a lot of things electrical, but what they're not good at is things that change state a lot like this. So what they've done on this meter is for our current ratings, we have a VFD filter. The current for a motor that's driven by a VFD, the motor acts as a low pass filter already. So our current waveform will actually look pretty clear. It'll be a nice waveform, but it'll look kind of really noisy like that. But our voltage waveforms for the VFD output are gonna be these square waves. By having a low pass filter for the voltage setting, It'll basically help the meter interpret these fast pulsing square waves into something more smooth that the meter can interpret and then you'll get more accurate readings. I know I wish I had a live demonstration for this. I'm still learning programming, but hopefully that's helpful. Now that we've got that stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and run through just real quick the rest of the settings for the meter. Right now we're set to the voltage. You can do AC or DC depending on the function button. And it also has a VFD filter that we kind of covered. Defaults to DC, we have our range function. You can see that it defaulted to millivolts. Now we're watching the resolution change. Here we'll have that relative setting. So I wanted to give kind of a demonstration of the relative in case it wasn't absolutely clear. We can take a DC voltage measurement. We have 12 volts DC looking great on there. We can hit relative. See how that voltage turns to zero? So now if I remove my leads, it's at minus 12 volts so that if I want to make relative measurements to my baseline, I can see the difference. And we can hit our function, we can head into AC. Again, we're in millivolts. So we're seeing 44, 43 millivolts. Be really careful about that M. And then on our secondary display is no longer showing ambient temperature, but now it's showing Hertz. We can see a 60 Hertz, 120, looking strong. We're seeing 75, oh, that's weird. Oh, that's millivolts, 75 millivolts between my neutral and my ground. And then we should have our VFD low pass filter on there that filters out any kind of noise for us. Now we have Hertz and duty cycle is on the same display. That's something that I really love about this dual display that you'll start to fall in love with as well. I've got this little meter right here and it will actually output a square wave for me and we can go ahead and take a measurement of it. So we're seeing the output is at 50% duty cycle or at 47 Hertz is what's being outputted. I really like that functionality of that. Instead of any time that you have a multimeter that has Hertz and duty cycle, you have to switch between the two. It's got it both on there as one. Resistance, continuity, diode, and capacitance, it's going to default to resistance. We should be able to cycle through range, kilo ohm, mega ohm, just normal ohm. Man, that's great. And then I think if we just want to reset it to auto, we can do that. We can take a resistive measurement coming back as 146 ohms. Hit our function button. This is showing a speaker here for continuity. Look at that. And you even get that green indicator up at the top. I like that. Very cool. Function again, now we have a diode symbol and then it should show open in the other direction. That's great. Sometimes you can see in the diode setting, you can get like a forward voltage reading if it's low enough. I don't know that the white LED might require too much forward voltage. Let's, oh, 
2.6 lights it up. That's great. I love it when it does that. So we did diode now should be capacitance and it's going to default to nano ferrets. Ferrets. I'm not sure if it says it in the manual, but it is always a good idea to discharge your capacitors before you take measurements of them. If it's on a board, have at least one leg of the capacitor disconnected from the board. It's coming back as 633 microfarads. What's displayed on here? 680 microfarads is what it's rated for. And then I think there should be some kind of tolerance. I think that falls within tolerance because I think it's plus or minus 10% of what's rated on the capacitor. If I remember correctly, if I'm not, uh, let me know down in the comments. Okay, so that's great. Now we can move on to the thermal couple section. This one should be pretty straightforward. Great for taking measurements of motors getting hot. You can see how hot they're getting. And we have Celsius and Fahrenheit. And I just like to do a check here. Should be warming up. I'm not sure if you're too familiar with how these thermal couple leads work. They're gonna be two different metals that are fused together. And when there is a a temperature difference, it creates a very small voltage and that's what the meter is picking up. Volt AC and DC in low impedance. So if you're not familiar with this or you're not too sure, another term we can use for impedance is think of resistance. Your meter is normally in a very, very high level of resistance. Let's get another meter so that we can demonstrate. So it says in the manual, I think it's 10 mega ohms that is the default amount of impedance for the meter. And then when we're in low impedance, it's like 300 kilo ohms. So let's just take a look first at our high impedance setting, which is gonna be standard across pretty much all meters. And we're coming back about 11 mega ohms. And if we switch this over to low impedance, yeah, coming right in the money on about 300 kilo ohms. So the internal impedance of the meter itself is lowered drastically. And what that does is it essentially puts a little bit of a load on the circuit. Get a little demonstration for you. Let's go ahead and use the high impedance to start with. And I'm going to take a measurement off of each one of these wires. On my red wire, I'm showing 120 volts. My black wire, I'm showing about 22 volts. The other end of the black wire isn't actually attached to anything. This is known as ghost voltage, okay? This is induced voltage. The red wire is actually our hot. The black wire isn't plugged into anything. If you have these long stretches of AC power lines that are running in parallel like you would in a commercial facility, industrial setting, anything like that, you can get what's known as ghost voltage. And it's going to be really hard to tell which ones are actually hot and which ones are not. Because if I was out in the field and I took a measurement of that, I could think, oh, that's probably a 24 volt AC feed for some instrument or something. There's no actual usable voltage on that line. So that's when our low impedance setting is gonna come in handy. We can set it to that, make sure it's on AC. And what it's gonna do is put a very, very small load on there and drop off any potential ghost voltage. So let's take a look at our red. Coming back, 60 hertz, 120, looking nice and strong. But now if I measure my black, instead of 22 volts, I'm seeing 0.7. So it puts enough of a load on there to drop off like 20 volts of ghost voltage. And that tells me, oh, that line is dead. That's what that low impedance setting's for. Very handy. Any meter that you're gonna use for AC, electrical, installation, troubleshooting, measuring like that should have a low impedance setting built into it somewhere. Let's go on to non-contact voltage and the live. Non-contact voltage is gonna let us know if we have something live or dead. It's not 100% reliable, but it can be great for out in the field doing quick checks. What I really like though is the live function because I personally never use non-contact, but they have something even better and that is the live function. And with the live function is you can actually put a lead to figure out if it's hot. So that way you are making contact and now you know. The live, I believe it has a high and low to let you know if it's low voltage or higher voltage. And one last little goodie for you is the flashlight. 
Pretty cool. That is the Kiwitz HT208 Delta. I hope you found this informative, educational. I hope I was accurate. Uh, let me know down in the comment section what you think. Hit that like button if you liked it. That helps me make more videos. Go ahead and check out the links in the description. I had a lot of fun playing around with this meter. I think this is currently my favorite meter out of my collection, but a very cool tool. Get it on discount. Use that coupon code and I'll check you all in the next one.